So we want to dedicate this day to all the fathers. First of all, our Heavenly Father that decided long ago that he was going to help us out, that he was a maker of heaven and earth. He's a maker of us. He decided long ago that he would put us in the book of life, and he wrote our name down in there. That's what it says, before the creation of world, before the heavens were created, before the foundation of the earth. In other words, before he even looked at the earth, he knew you and I. He wrote our name down in the book of life. And now he's given us a choice to either accept his way out of all this sinfulness. He's given us a choice. That's a pretty kind dad, isn't it? That's like a father starting a business for you and say, you can either start one on your own and fail, or you can, start, you can just dovetail into this one because this one's running, and it runs really good. You know, that's the difference about starting a business and getting into a business that's already started. There's a whole lot of difference. Anybody know that? Oh, yeah. That's why you work for Caterpillar. Amen? I'll tell you what, people that start their own business so many times they struggle their whole life until the second and third generation where it really takes off. But we got a father that started salvation. Amen, Forrest? Amen. He's got a business going on in heaven that's going on long before we were around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for that. Amen? Amen. He's a kind dad. And the father, uh, word father means giver of life. Giver of life to something that just sits there dormant. Just sits there waiting for life to come into it. A father, that's why we're called fathers. We're a giver of life. We sow the seed and stuff comes up. We have children the same way. Our heavenly father gave us freedom from sin because it says he gave his only son. He gave his son. He gave something that he made, but always was. He gave us Jesus. He gave us a plan. He said, this plan, how would you like to have a plan in your life that would get you out of the thick of it all? Now, we've got a heavenly father that has that plan. Amen? He's a good one to seek, and we need to be grateful and thankful for him. God gives us that. He gives every father that responsibility and ability. That's what our Heavenly Father does. He gives us that ability to take those things that he puts us over and to raise them up. That we would show the kids, our kids, in the way that they should go. And every father that's home today in bed, shame on him. Never took his ch children to church, shame on him. Because that's the one thing that matters. That's the only thing that really matters in the end. Did you know Jesus? Did you have a relationship with the one that the Heavenly Father sent? And at the cross turned his back on him. Because he couldn't, he couldn't stand to gaze upon sin. And he made his son a sacrifice for every father that stays home today and doesn't take their responsibility and say, okay, you little kids, you're going to church. Get your dresses on. Get your pants on. We're going to church. And those little children that are all in church today and they're all listening to their teacher and, and the teacher is trying to explain to them about God on their level. And all the parents are in the sanctuary listening and getting inspired so they'll go back home. And there'll be a fine example. Every father that sits in church today going and hearing the word of God and is going to go home and be an example to him. Let us just take our hat off to him and say that's a good dad. Amen? Amen. That's a good dad that's not only making a living for his children, making a way for them, but is being an example for them. And, and showing not only the son how to be a father, one day, but showing the, the daughters that this is what you marry. A man who seeks God, that is after God. That your children don't grow up being vicious 
And when something goes their way, they take the gun and they take them out. And say, I don't know why my son did that. I'll tell you why he did it. Because he didn't have a good example. Most probably didn't have a good example. Because dad was always doing something else. But thank God that for you fathers that are here today. Thank God for the fathers, our fathers, that went to church every Sunday. We went to church no matter what. I thank my dad for that. I think a lot about what my dad did. But you know, if you don't have an earthly father, you've got a heavenly father. He tells us in the word, in the Bible, what to do and what not to do. Amen. And all our earthly fathers, they made mistakes at different times, but they did a lot right. And I can, I can say that my earthly father, my dad, showed me how to work and work hard. He showed me how to never give up, never stop. My only problem is sometimes I don't know when to fold them or when to hold them. Sometimes you got to know when to stop and go a different direction. I've seen that in my life. I'll make it, I'll make it, I'll go, I'll go. And I learned that by him. Working with him in the fields. Hoeing right beside him with a hoe in my hand. thinking we'll never get to the end of this bean field so I can get a drink of water and watched him work and watched him labor when we walked beans I would try to get that weed in the row the bean row with the hoe and usually I was clipping a bean and he saw it And he says, you don't clip a bean trying to get a weed. Well, I kept clipping the beans, trying not to, but too lazy to just get over there and bend over and pull it out because you just can't get it any other way sometimes. And remember, the backside of the hoe, the handle came and whacked me on the backside, my butt, he said, you don't clip the beans. I'm telling you for the last time. He taught me excellence. Excellence in my work. Excellence. And I have to say today, sometimes I got to know when I've gone far enough with excellence because you can get driven with it. Amen. But I want to thank you men here today that this church looks the way it does because you have a standard. And it ain't a lower standard, it's a higher standard. And I can't tell you how many people come to this church and say, this is really a nice place inside. And I'll tell you what, the outside is getting just as nice too by your, your hands, your help. God gave us freedom from sin. There is no one like our Heavenly Father and He gave us our earthly fathers. And you know what? Good or bad, God teaches us a lot. He teaches us and gives us the strength that what we saw our earthly fathers do that wasn't the way to go, that we, it taught us and it teaches us, don't do that, but do all the good that he did do. Amen? And But to thank God for him. Some of us here today might have fathers that took off on him. It was a teacher to us. I thank you, God that my father did take off on me, that he left mom alone, and I remember that's something you don't do. And not only that, it teaches you to teach your children this is something that you don't do. You always stick in there, and you always help them out. You always serve them. You never leave and say, I'm out of here. It might be a wound down in your heart, but that wound, there can be life in that thing that springs up and says there's some things you don't ever do in life and you plant your foot down and you stand for truth in your life there's some things you don't do you never walk out on your family why because maybe you were walked out on 
But I'll tell you what, God will give you the strength to plant your foot and to show all your family, this is the type of man you marry. You never walk out on your family. Amen? So there's good that can come out of everything. There's good that can come out of everything. If you're in an abusive situation at home, you feel like your parents or your dad was a little tough on you, that's something that you know. You only take it this far. You learn by all those things, but we thank God for our fathers. Amen? We thank God for them. We thank God for all the fathers in, in the World War I and World War II, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Korea, all of it that fight, fought for our freedom, but the freedom around the world. Amen? We thank for all the dads that died on the battlefield that never went back home to see their families. Amen? That's something that men do. That's something that fathers do. They die on the battlefields. They die, they die serving. You never get out of the service when you become a dad. You never get out of the service of serving your children. There's always that wisdom that you're, te you're given. There's always that correction that you're given. You know, the hardest thing for a dad is, is when he has to bring correction to the ones that he loves, and he'll watch their face, and their lips quiver, and the tears come out of their eyes, because he has to tell them what's right and what's wrong. And it breaks his heart to, be, to have to do it, but he does it because he's the father. He has a responsibility to stand and bring correction, even when it breaks his heart. And I have to tell you to here today, as an overseer of the church, that I have many times, it bothers me very deeply that I have to address certain issues in the church, pointed at certain ones, because I know what's right, and it has to be told, and there must be inspiration given, and a strength given to pick yourself up and get going, and quit making excuses. And many times it is so hard to do that, and I know, and you know what I'm talking about, you dads out there. Because the last thing you want to do is your friend maybe become your enemy. But you've got to stand for truth. And maybe, maybe an enemy of your own household. Because you've got to stand for what's right. Amen. And you'll know that someday that person will understand. And maybe when you're in your grave, they'll honor you and say, you know what, dad was right. He was right. And I see it all real clear now. Okay? So I take, I take this time to, to uplift every father that has to stand in the midst of, of um, it's not popular. And the Bible says, as we glorify and we give thanks to uh, our fathers here today on Father's Day, it says we are to glorify our for your heavenly Father, and let your light shine. The very image, the very expression of God, let it shine through you. In other words, how your Father is in heaven, let it shine through you. Let it shine through you. You might have to pick apart a few things with your earthly Father. And you might have to say, well, I can't let this shine because that wasn't good, but I can let all this shine because that was good with my Father. But your heavenly father, there's nothing that's not good in him. Is that a double negative? Yes. There's nothing that's not good. It's all good. It's all good. Of Proverbs, it says, A wise man heareth his father's instructions. A wise son heareth his father's instructions. A fool defies the a fool despises his father's instructions, but he that regardeth reproof or correction is prudent. Proverbs 15.10 says, Correction is grievous unto him that forsakes away. Correction is grievous. You ever know when you, cor you correct your child or your son? He don't want to hear it. It's grievous. It's also grievous for a dad to have to give it out. But it says, he that hateth reproof, he shall die. He shall die. And you as a father, that's why you need to give reproof. That's why you need to give correction. Because if you spare the rod, 
the child dies. He dies in here. Amen? He dies inside because there's no guidance. Praise God for the fathers that guide their children. Amen? Is an example for them. I've learned something in my life. It isn't just hard work that is to be your example and provide for your family. It is to be a spiritual guide also. Because in the end, that's where it all matters. That's where it all matters. Amen? The poor will lie in their caskets just like the rich. All like this. And they'll all have a covering on them, of clothes of some sort. But now what? But now what? Going back to your Heavenly Father, I wrote a few things down and I'll probably end with a few things here. You've got a Heavenly Father in Heaven you can thank God for, you can thank Jesus for, because he was, he was also uh, obedient to his Father. He came to do his Father's will. He did it, as every son should do his father's will. Amen? And there was nothing wrong with the father. And it said that, the Bible says that your heavenly father, he's perfect. He's perfect. He says, be like your father in heaven. Be perfect. Be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Hallelujah. See, there's that example. Let your alms and your prayers and your fastings because your heavenly father sees it all. He says, do it in secret for your father sees it in secret. He sees everything. He not only has an intu to intuition, but he actually sees it. He misses nothing. That's your father in heaven. The father always has promises in your life. In Acts 1, 4, and 5, it says, wait for the promise. You got a good dad in heaven, amen? Just says, you've had good fathers down here. He says, wait for the promise, because there's always something coming. Amen? It's always Christmas is coming. Amen? When I was growing up, I couldn't wait to get back home from church. We had to go to midnight mass. We went to midnight mass. That was a tough one, and I, all I was thinking about was what was underneath the Christmas tree. And when we got home, yeah, we got one present. We didn't like kids today. They get flooded with presents, and they don't know what to do with them all. We got one present. I remember just on the floor with a little tractor and a hay rack behind it. And there I was, just plain dad. Because this is what dad does. But I couldn't wait to get home. Because my dad had bought me that. Amen? I'll tell you what. Christmas. Every day is Christmas with your Heavenly Father. He has, a, he has a plan in your life. He has a plan in your life. He, Christmas is coming. Amen? A gift is coming to you. He not only gave you Jesus Christ, but He's got more than that. He's got more than that. He can lift you up. He can set you in heavenly places. He can honor you. There's always honor with God. You serve him your whole life. You give out. God says, now today's your day. Your heavenly father. Amen. Your life giver. Today's your day. As maybe you've seen some pictures with your father holding you. Your heavenly father holds you right now as being an older man. He holds you right now and he has a good plan for you. Not only that, he's got workers that it's building you a mansion in heaven and a place to stay. Who cares about the streets of gold? But I'll tell you one thing that he has for you in heaven when you get there. Peace. Peace that passes understanding. Joy in your heart. Everlasting. That's what he's got for you. He's going to do that for you. Where there be no more sadness and no more tears and no more pain. No more suffering. That you'll cease from your labor for the Lord down here. And you'll go to heaven. And he says this is your reward. That's your heavenly father what he has for you. Amen. That's why we help our children. We don't throw them off to a side, but we help them. Maybe a little better, and I helped Luke do that drywall down, down in his basement. But I did haul it there for him with my truck. <laughs> we can't do everything for him, but we can do what we can do. All right.
I'm clearing myself right there, okay? But wait for the promise. The Heavenly Father has put all things and seasons in his own power. And that's your Father. That's your Father. That's your Father. So I didn't have an uh, earthly dad. You got a Heavenly Father that made all the earthly dads. All right? John 3.16 was the last one I've written down, and you know that. He so loved you. Your Heavenly Father so loved you. He so loved you. He made a way out for you. He sent a son, as you are a son now. He sent one like you, but totally obedient to him. And he died for you. He was a perfect sacrifice. Why God had to do that, I don't know. But I will, I will say this. Where there's sin, there's pain. Where there's sin, there has to be retribution given. It's just the way it is with God. Payment has to be made. That's what the Heavenly Father decided long ago. Payment has to be made. Sometimes we wonder why we suffer, because payment has to be made. Well, for our sins, that we'd be forgiven in the eyes of our Father in Heaven, Jesus Christ was given to us. He was given. He was the ransom for you. He so loved you that he sacrificed his own son. See, see what the father did? Sometimes we do things. You go, oh, oh uh, let me take the blunt of it. What father wouldn't stand in the way of the bullet? Because it would be too painful for a father to let his son take the bullet and he live. Well, our father did the ultimate. He sent his son to take the suffering, the bullet, the nails through the hand, the opening of the side, the battering, the, 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 the soldiers that put a, a bag over his head and punched him, cold cocked him so he wouldn't see it coming you know they did that besides they put a crown of thorns and beat it in with clubs so it went way down in up against the skull they did that to him that hurt our father in heaven but at the same time it pleased him knowing that you'd be forgiven each one of you would be forgiven when Jesus was taken that, for the joy of the cross, it says he endured the cross. What was the joy of it all? You got an older brother in heaven. Just to have you next to him, he, he took the bullet for you. He took the beating for you. Just so you'd be with him in heaven. That's why we don't never want to neglect such a great salvation and trample the grace that our brother gave us, Jesus Christ, into the ground. The thing that he did for us. That him and the Heavenly Father had a plan from the beginning. Amen? Noah saved his whole family. Built an ark. Spent 120 years working hard every day. I don't know that he complained. I don't know that he did, he did not. He might have complained. But he sent his kids out and the sons worked with him and he saved his whole family amen that's a father's place to save the whole family to save the whole family to fast for the family to fast for them to fast for them to pray for them to lay his life down for them we sometimes forget to do those spiritual things we work hard for our kids we supply to them and once they grow older it's like okay you guys are out on your own you're so glad to see the daughter walk down that aisle it's like okay you found yourself a guy all right and there's no more of those special expensive things <laughs> it's like okay you found yourself a man go for it But you really never get away from it. Really never get away from it. We really should never get away from fasting and praying for our children. Amen. Because it's not about us. We haven't lived our life about us. Fathers, ought to, they're the ones. Now I'm going to tell you something, you dads. You're the ones that are the example because that's what the daughter, daughter is going to marry. 
so many times as somebody is just like their dad. You're the example. And now you're the example. Your daughters see you and say, you know what? Husband, you don't go to church. You really need to. Because she, she's watching her dad. Every Either it's daughter or the sons, they're watching their father. Your kids are watching you. Your kids are watching you. Your kids are watching you. Be the strength. Be the immovable rock. And put your, kind of like put your money where your mouth is at. Put up. Never, you know, it said put up or shut up. No, put up. Put up. And never shut up. Put up. You have to. And like I said, those dads that stayed home today, and they're not an example. They need to be prayed for. Dads are at a car show somewhere instead of in church. You know what they're saying? This is what they're saying. If you got something else and more important, go ahead and do it. I'm telling you. You go to church first, you make a way for God first, you're teaching your family, and then after that is everything else. God's first. Amen. God's always first. You don't have to get old, too old. We don't need to get old at all to learn that. We just need to d just do it now. So I thank a every one of you fathers for being a good dad. Bring your kids to church, showing little Chloe what to do, all the kids. That's, that's something that is priceless. She's back there right now learning about Jesus. Oh, you should, would it be better if she was at home with Barbie? We need Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ as Lord. Where, where would she be better at? Learning about Jesus in a classroom, something that's being planted in her brain, so when she gets older, she just remembers. She just remembers. I think this is real important. I think this is important, and I think the reason why, I, yeah, I got a call in my life to preach the gospel, but I just remember riding in a pickup truck because the drifts were too high down the country roads to make it to church. So we rode in the pickup truck, and Dad put the cattle canvas over the back, and we made it to church. And there was only us and one other family in there, and that happened a couple, two different times. But we would not miss church. We would not miss church. We would not miss church. And I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you something, how I was programmed. When I started going to the Protestant churches, and we called rebellious ones, thank God they were rebellious, and people were missing church, I didn't understand that. It was not programmed into my head. And I'm just being real with you. I didn't understand. Well, where are you at this Sunday? Well, we stayed home. <coughs> it's like, and I'll tell you what was programmed in my mind. You're going to hell. Because that's what we were taught. You're going to hell. You know what? That is really true. Because unless you're there and you are inspired by God, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. And it's like, I had this put in my mind and I was programmed. And you know something? I don't have a problem going to church. I absolutely don't. Even though when I was growing up and I became a teenager and moved away from house the first Sunday I was gone, I, I didn't go to church. I'm not going to do that. But I was already programmed up here. And so when I decided I was going to start walking with God, it was like I couldn't understand why people had strongholds in their life. No the problem was that they were just never programmed. So you dads, when you pro are you programming your children, you're programming your, your, your other kids, your grandchildren, know this, you are programming them. 
And what you program into them is what they are and what they'll become. My dad programmed into me to be a hard worker and to go to church. Even though I maybe don't agree with everything of the church I went to, it was programmed into me. And that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Amen? That's how important you fathers are. And that's important your work has been. And I thank God for you. And God will thank you when you get to heaven for the fine example that you've given. Amen? And your words of wisdom. And if you see where a father is missing it, pray for him. Pray for him. Only God can help him. Amen. Let's stand. Thank the Lord.